before we begin, if you want to see music bios or more good videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Also, I've started a Patreon account. On here you get more copyrighted material and they'll be uploaded 48 hours prior to YouTube. If you want to support or visit, link is in the description. And without further ado, on to our feature presentation. Avery is an aspiring swimmer. Yes, a black dude who knows how to swim. He wants a swimming scholarship, but he took a gap year as he's been raising his son with his girl Krista. In his neighborhood, we meet Kashmir as he's in there clapping cheeks with Dana, aka Ronnie from the Players Club. She's a mule working for cleanup who has been in prison for three years. He meets another man named Broadway who's also working for him. Broadway comes up short on payday and gets his ass kicked by Cash. He gives him 24 hours to give him the rest of his money. Broadway then tells him he'd rather be killed, and in hindsight, Cash should have killed him. But anyway, moving on, after this, Cash picks up his other friend, Dre. Dre is Krista's brother and high school dropout who's been holding down a job. Cash offers him to sell rocks for him, but Dre turns it down out of fear of repercussions from his mother and Krista, and this will have some importance later on. Avery wins his swim meet and meets Charles Pierce, a recruiter who sparks interest in Avery. While the meet is happening, and let me repeat, while the meet is happening, Broadway holds up a local burger joint and shoots the cashier. He then plants his gun in Cashmere's car for payment. After the meet, Avery hangs out with Dre and Cash for a night drive, all while sliding to Shaka Khan. Dre knows the gun in his car and all of them put their hands on it. Cash keeps insisting that the gun isn't his and this gets the police attention and pulls them over. While complying, Cashmere's dog charges at the police who shoots him. Distraught, Cash goes for the gun, making the situation a lot worse. The trial ends up very swift and all men are found guilty for the burger robbery slash murder. Some trial. You know, all of this could have been prevented if one of the swim coaches would have given an alibi for the men, Avery at least, by giving Avery swim times that occurred during the robbery. Just a thought of mine. They're all sent to a prison in New Mexico. Cash meets his cellmate Nate who is serving time for killing Ricky. Well, not really. Maybe the murder of Janet's boyfriend from Poetic Justice. But anyway, Cash puts him in his place and lets him know that he runs things in his cell. Avery meets his cellmate Malachi Young, played by everyone's favorite hood movie actor, a trained martial artist who lets him know that he's not to play with either, but he's willing to take him in. He assigns him the top bunk, and I've researched this and never found out why this is such. Comment down below if you know why new prisoners get the top bunk. Anyway, Dre meets his cellmate named Graffiti. Graffiti is a white supremacist who takes a liking to Dre and takes advantage of him. Now, unpopular opinion, Dre got what he deserved. And what I mean is, he did not deserve to have his manhood taken. No man deserved that. But he made it too easy for Graffiti. Dre had his hair slicked back, which already caught his eye. Then he just rolled into his cell without being placed there. And then Graffiti places a book on his bunk for Dre to read. Like when a predator uses bait to catch his prey. But all in all, this scene was very difficult to watch. At the yard, Cash beats up with Avery, but Avery doesn't want to hear it as he blames Cash for ruining his life, and rightfully so. Cash beats up with Cleanup, who wants to join his operation in smuggling drugs. And this is where we also find out Graffiti is the rival. And we also, also learn that the cops, or COs within, also work in the drug smuggling business. The next day, they do a strip search in the cells. They find a syringe in Nate's cell, that'll be important later on, and Perez finds a shank in Avery's bunk, which Avery tells him that it wasn't his. And this was a test from Malachi as the shank was his, but Avery didn't squeal on him, gaining the trust of Mal. One of Cleanup's men named Alize catches a football player dealing with graffiti. He then gives him the okie doke to take him out by dropping a barbell on him, eliminating one of graffiti's main customers. After lockdown, Avery wants to talk to Dre, but Mal tells him no, and the reason being is that he's now property of graffiti. Krista then visits Avery in prison, but he tells her not to come back. While visitation, we learn methods on how visitors smuggle drugs into prisons. The recruiter wants to help Avery get out and act on his behalf, on the condition he stays out of trouble. Graffiti wants revenge for the football player's death, but Perez tells him not to act. But we all know prisoners, they don't listen. They kill one of Cleanup's men and then placed in lockdown. We are then show what goes down in lockdown. Some read, 
Some eat chips, some do push-ups, and some eats, well, yeah. But according to actor DeAndre Bonds, he hated filming this scene and cried his eyes out after one take. Um, at the filming the scene, one shot, skew. One take, because I told him I'm not finna do this over and over and over. I walked off the set, went somewhere secluded, and I cried, bro. Because I felt like I just had a... Uh, did something that wasn't necessary. You know what I mean? It wasn't me. It wasn't in my spirit. My spirit was uncomfortable. And if I could go back, I wouldn't do it. But more importantly, what most prisoners do while in lockdown is think and reflect and is finally getting to Avery. After lockdown, getting taken advantage of in the worst way is getting to Dre and he now shoots up heroin. Told you that'll be important. Krista then revisits Avery and it goes much smoother than last time. She tells him that Dre hasn't called nor wrote letters to them. So Krista tells him to look after Dre. And while this goes on, Dre finally finds a confidence to fight graffiti, but it's not going in his favor. And that is until Avery and Mal steps in and a brawl ensues. Mal drops one guy and he falls three stories down. The CLs put Dre, Avery, and Mal in ISO while letting graffiti and his boys walk. Once again, Charles Pierce tells him that he's blowing it. He could be facing board time regardless. Mal somehow hears this and comes up with an idea. At the board meeting, he takes full responsibility of what happened. He ends up acting crazy and unstable, and thanks to Mal, Avery and Dre walked. Mal is sentenced to maximum security, and by doing this, he sacrificed his final two months for Avery. Clean up and Cash then meets up with Dre. They tell him graffiti is out to get him after the brawl, and cleanup gives him more of that vein juice to help him get ready for the deed. Back outside, Krista finds out Broadway is spending a life sentence at another prison for a ro another robbery gone wrong. She believes that he might have something to do with the burger joint robbery and wants to visit him. Avery then discovers a small shank in Malachi's book that he gifted him. He then gets a new cellmate and Avery decides to mentor him the same way he was brought up by Mal. Cash finally tells Avery about cleanup's operation, but Avery isn't down with that and thanks to Cash's loud ass voice, Nate overhears the entire conversation. He snitches to the DA and the CLs cover up Nate's disappearance to him overdosing after and being transferred out. Luckily, Cash doesn't think much of it. Nate overdosed. He's in the infirmary. We're gonna transfer him out in a couple of days. He got tired of me whooping his ass. With Krista, she talks to Broadway in an effort to confess, but that fails. Dre shoots up one more time to get him ready for the deed. He does the deed in the middle of a gospel concert, but the result would leave Dre dead thanks to a clubbing blow to the head by Perez. When Dana tries to visit Cleanup, she gets booked. The crew waits until one of the CLs tells Cleanup that she got busted. He quickly blames Kashmir for the downfall, but he tells him that he told Avery. And this set Cleanup off and orders Cash to take him out or else he'll be taken out. Outside at Dre's funeral, detectives track Krista down and tells her that Broadway took himself out but wrote a letter to Krista confessing all of his wrongdoings. This is just enough for them to file a habeas corpus for Avery. The prison is now on edge after Graffiti's death and have a feeling that something's gonna go down. But Avery isn't too worried about it. At the yard, a full prison riot breaks out while Krista tries to get Avery released. Perez meanwhile gets trampled to death, good riddance, and during this, Cash goes toe to toe with Avery. And just when Cash about to go in for the kill, he comes to the realization that he can't do it. Cleanup then stabs Cash into the back. And just when he's about to take him out, Cash comes in to save the day. And just when they make peace, the officers put an end to Cash. They did tell him to drop the weapon. After the riot, Avery's released and is reunited with Krista. He celebrates his freedom by going in for a swim. I discovered this film through another YouTuber's reaction video, and when I finally watched this film for the first time on Tubi, I was blown away, but I have thoughts, even though I expressed some of them in the recap already. First, let's start off with Dre. Poor Dre. He was an example on how the weak is treated in prison, and I'm not taking back what I said about him earlier, but again, he did not deserve to get his manhood taken. Next was Kashmir, and what kind of friend is he? He encouraged Dre into quitting his job to sell rocks, and fails. 
He then puts his friends in a bad predicament when he draws a gun on a cop after she killed his dog. Then he tries to encourage Avery to be part of the drug smuggling operation, but Avery didn't want to do it. And for Avery, he represents most wrongfully convicted prisoners. Some prisoners don't get lucky like Avery and spend most of their time wrongfully put away for crimes they didn't commit. Phil is definitely a watch, and it's reason number 264 why you should stay out of the system. The food being the top reason. And that concludes the lockdown review. Tell me what y'all think in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.